can't do anything. None of my VPNs and proxy work properly. So I decided to record this video and send it to you. Uh, so I'm sorry about this. Today I am going uh, to present an article uh, which I, as a part of the research team, submitted in a PRS journal. Uh, it's about simultaneous removal of dorsal nasal scar and reduction of rhinoplasty. It was a cross-sectional study. Um, the following minutes, I'm going to discuss some of the objectives, uh, including the background, methods and materials of this research study, the surgical intervention, uh, as well as the results and the clinical outcome. Let's start with the background. The clinical problem which uh, gained our attention was scars affecting uh, the dorsal nasal skin. It was not a novel uh, problem. Um, many scientists and clinicians had studied uh, it area earlier and published lots of uh, useful uh, papers. Mm. Uh, I chose uh, three of them to present here. And the first one uh, was applying grafts and flaps. Uh, in addition to the uh, benefits, uh, it has some consequences. Uh, first of all, it can cause deformity in the donor site. Also, it can cause asymmetry and disfiguring in the receiver site. Um, lastly, it can cause hypo or hyperpigmentation. The second was applying silicone gel. Um, it's only applicable to hypertrophic scars. Uh, some patients complain about long drawing time. Also, some of them complain about some psychological discomfort with the visibility of the treatment. The third one uh, was about applying triamcinolon. Um, it can cause subcutaneous atrophy, depigmentation, necrosis, and alteration. It's only applicable to the hypertrophic scars. Mm. The design of the study, so it's a retrospective cross-sectional study. Uh, it uh, is conducted in 2020 at Isfahan University of Medical Sciences. Uh, so, uh, medical Sciences. Uh, the number of patients who finished the study uh, was uh, 33. Uh, we chose some assessment tools to understand uh, the clinical outcomes. Um, the first one was a shocker concept. Uh, it was uh, to assess the area affected by the scar. The second one was SPSES. Uh, we use it for the same reason. The third one was about uh, was um, SNELT 22. It was for assessing the breathing status of the patients. Uh, the fourth one was a kind of prompt because we wanted to understand uh, the quality of this intervention from the patient's perspective. And the last one was VAS. I wanted to stand, we wanted to understand the patient's per perception of their nasal appearance subjectively. The first uh, three one uh, was used before the surgery and then six months after the surgery. The last two one were used at four time points, which I will discuss later. Uh, we defined uh, a set of inclusion exclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria. Um, first of all, patients who had a dorsal nasal skull uh, with clinical indications for reduction rhinoplasty. Uh, they were patients who were admitted to the university hospitals under supervision of Isfahan University of Medical Sciences between 2013 and 2018. Uh, they had at least two years gap between the initial skull and receiving the surgical intervention. And exclusion criteria. Um, if they had not any willingness to join this study, also if they had any kind of comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, and things like that, also if they had respiratory disorders uh, or any kind of burning injuries on their face, they were not included in this study here. I um, uh, inserted a picture of one of the patients who had this intervention. This picture is taken before the surgery, so we can see the status of the scar on the dorsal, on the dorsal nozzle skin. The surgery intervention consisted of three stages. Firstly, the scar was removed. Secondly, uh, reduction of rhinoplasty was performed from the same axis. And 
Lastly, the extra skin remaining from this procedure covered the defect as an advancement flap. Let's move to the results. So uh, from 51 patients, only 33 of them uh, finished this study uh, and were eligible to uh, include it in this um, report. So uh, the mean age was uh, 30 years old, ranged from 20 to 50. Uh, also, um, a majority of them uh, were male. It was about 51 percent. Um, um, the, um, uh, as you can see in this table, majorly they were employees. The highest educational degree was high school diploma, and the main reason for having um, the scar was osteomyosis. Uh, uh, it's the second table. It shows the results of uh, evaluating um, uh, the scar uh, by Shaker concept. As you can see, the area affected by the scar had a significant decrease. In this table, you can see the outcome and results of VA score and PROM. So, um, the PROM indicated improvement in patient satisfaction, satisfaction. Also, considering the VA score, constant improvement in patient's perception of their nozzle appearance was determined. Uh, about the SPSES, uh, as you can see, um, 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 you can see a significant improvement after the intervention. And lastly, as note 22, as you can see, the, uh, not only this intervention had a kind of um, breathing uh, side effects, uh, it also had a kind of uh, improvement in the breathing status of the patients. So we can conclude that uh, this intervention can contribute to satisfactory results. It improves the nose's appearance, remains a small scar, and uh, lastly, the scar will not widen later. So we can suggest the uh, uh, concurrent scar excision and reduction of rhinoplasty from the same axis for eligible patients. Um, uh, thank you for your attention and once again I apologize for...